The market's normalized. I'm surprised about the inventory numbers in the single family market, though. And it's time to start putting that watchful eye on the condo inventory levels and the build that we've been seeing there. But more on that in a couple seconds. The spring market, it's here. Showings are up. Inventory's up. Under agreements are up. Oh, and interest rates are up. Way up. And I think that these interest rates, they're going to put a little dent into the spring market. We're going to get into all of that just a little bit more later as well. In this video, we're going to go over the single family as well as the condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update. Well, maybe not so quick. And we're also going to talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to the real estate market, then no, I'm here to help. Two quick highlights. We buy houses all over Massachusetts. Cash fast or slow closing timelines. If you know of anyone that's looking to sell and doesn't want to go through the hassles of the traditional way, then have them visit cashofferma.com or reach out to me in the phone number below. But speaking of that good old fashioned way of selling, we now offer a new economy selling program of 1% instead of the traditional 5 or 6%. Do you know of anyone that's thinking about selling and maybe possibly wanting to save possibly tens of thousands of dollars? Then I'd love to chat with them as well. Have them reach out. Let's jump into the single family market stats. I was a little surprised to see that the inventory levels in the single family market actually dipped a little bit. I know we're comparing it to the Easter rebound week, but I was just surprised. There were 3,305 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We now have 8.7% more houses on the market today than just 28 days ago. But don't fear, more inventory, it's soon gonna be here. That I promise. You can see that the small dip from this week really actually helped close the gap between this year and last. We knew this gap was going to close a bit from last week, but again, I was just surprised to see how inventory levels went down this week. I just didn't see that. But we now have 129 more houses on the market today than compared to the same time last year. 958 more houses on the market today than compared back in 2022. We are just walking into the weeks where we are really going to start seeing some big inventory gains. Buyers, get ready. More selection, but also more competition is soon to be here. Inventory, it was down year over year because new listings, they were down. Don't get me wrong, the amount of new listings was strong, just not strong enough. This week, we listed 989 single-family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is 92 units, or 8.5% less than the same week back in 2023, which was the Easter rebound week, by the way. Now, four-week rolling average is 919 units. Under agreement shot up this week, which was expected with the Easter rebound week. This week, we put 1,052 houses under agreement. That is some strong under agreement data. We'd actually have to go back to the end of June of last year in order to find a week where we actually put more houses under agreement than we did last week. This week, we put 215 units or 25.7% more homes under agreement than the same week last year. We put 837 single family houses under agreement. And then that four week rolling average, that's 830 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings, they were down by 8.5% while under agreements, they were up by 25.7%. There are 428 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $857,000 and a median sales price of $631,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were actually down by 8.4% as there were 467 single family houses that closed this week last year for an average sales price of $799,000. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in, zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. Where the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory is up to 1.85 months from last week's 1.8 months. Now the 1.85 months this week is compared to the 1.76 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, it will be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We have 2,319 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is 14.9% more than the inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. Condo inventory continues to grow, and we are quickly catching up to the 2021 levels. We now have 169 more units on the market today than today last year. Meanwhile, we have 899 more units than compared to the inventory levels back in 2022 and are only 236 units off of 2021's inventory levels. 
There were 527 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 487 units. Now the 527 units listed was 24 units or 4.4% less than the 551 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. Under agreements, they were up. This week we put 448 under units under agreement now, this 448 condo sales was 52 units or 13.1% more than last year. We put 396 condos under agreement. Now, that four week rolling average for under agreements is uh, 417 units. So, 4.4% fewer listings that came on the market when compared to the same week last year while selling 13.1% more condos. There were 203 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $662,000 and a median sales price of $568,000. This same week last year, there were 228 condos that sold, so sales levels, they were down by 11%. Months of inventory actually jumped to 2.78 months from last week's 2.68 months. This is compared to months of inventory levels of 2.45 months this week last year. Now, I started keeping all of this data back in 2022, and we have never seen months of inventory higher in the condo market. In other words, the market is more favorable to home buyers today than it has been in the last two years. Any chance you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? It's right down there. Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference with that YouTube algorithm. It just plays with it, pushes it out to more people. And well, subscribing, if you haven't done that, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you're liking the content, I really appreciate you considering subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates though. Interest rates shot up this week and are nearly up 1% when compared to interest rate levels just one year ago. Now we've talked about it probably too much. I thought that those inflation numbers, that rosy rate cut scenarios was BS. But last week looked at the jobs report and kind of got an idea that the Fed could cut with those awful numbers. I was second guessing myself. That's what it came down to. I shouldn't have. The most recent inflation data says the Fed, it can't cut even if they want to cut before the election. The Fed isn't cutting in June. There are even talks about them raising rates. This is some big implications for, yes, the market and the buyers and sellers obviously in it, but also the institutions that serve the market. Think real estate companies, lenders, technology companies that support the industry. Big implications. Expect to see more layoffs. Expect to see more business failures. Many of these guys were hanging on by a thread and were planning for a rate decreasing environment that could raise the tide for their sinking ship. It's not going to happen. So what's the implications for you, the consumer? Obviously, higher rates mean that home affordability, unfortunately, it's going to go down. This will also slow down the sales pace of the market and on paper, it should increase inventory levels. I say on paper because that and the real world, well, they sometimes differ. But I will also throw out a bit of caution that the lender that you do business with really, really matters. Make sure it's a financially strong institution because the lender going out of business while you're in escrow, it's a world of problems and misery. Trust me on that one. Oh, and the interest rates are also thought to affect home building. Did you see the March data for new construction starts? This was the largest month over month drop in housing starts since COVID lockdowns. And did you see that the U.S. foreclosure activity actually increased in the first quarter of 2024? We aren't at a worrisome point as of yet, but it is definitely something that we want to continue to keep our eye on. There were 95,349 U.S. properties with a foreclosure filing during the first quarter of 2024. This is up 3% from the previous quarter, but down less than 1% from a year ago. And that's why I'm really not worried about this foreclosure data yet. I know some people are trying to get some good clicks with clickbait, but it's the year over year analysis that makes the most sense when looking at stats. But here's where I throw the yellow caution flag. There were a total of 67,657 US properties that started the foreclosure process in the first quarter of 2024. This was up 2% from the previous quarter and 4% from a year ago. Foreclosure starts don't necessarily mean actual foreclosures, but it's something to keep our eye on. The highest foreclosure rates he asked, well, that was in Delaware, New Jersey, as well as South Carolina. Massachusetts is ranked the 16th highest foreclosure rate in the country. But keep in mind that we're the 16th most populous state in the country. So this ranking really makes sense and would say that, well, we're doing pretty darn good as of yet. 
Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters, right? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my information in the description below right down there. Until next time.